Live and direct. Right, right, right. It's Sway in the morning. Right here on Shade 45. Bobcat is yeah, here. Yeah, we should say that. Yeah. Your gold is yeah. here. Bobcat gold In case waiters. people thought that was Steve <laughs> Gutenberg. I know, right? <laughs> How, how would you have directed yourself in that series? Really? I would have told me to take it down about 10,000 notches. <laughs> really? Uh, I probably said, that's good. I like what you're doing, but no one's going to understand what you're saying. So, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I probably, I probably would have been just like the director I worked with who would, he was confused and said, <laughs> I, I don't know, people seem to like it. <laughs> just left it at that. Yeah, he, he he didn't seem to be a big fan, actually. Uh, really? Yeah, he yeah. Like, <laughs> he was like, I don't know what he's saying. I don't get it. But uh, yeah. But somebody casted him, so I got to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. And then um, they tested it, and people seemed to like it, so they added new scenes. So that was definitely yeah. That really was what happened. You know? Yo, that's funny, man. You so you got on for being whack to the director, but 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 somebody else supported it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I did a show, uh, and this is what what I'm. 27 years ago uh, and at the comedy store with Whoopi Goldberg and, yeah. and the, the producers of Police Academy saw me. Yeah. The Police Academy. Now, I know people have fond memories of it and I don't mean to bag on it too much but I, re I recently said that, you know, they're rebooting the series. They're going to do what they did to 21 Jump Street. They're going to make it a comedy this time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's true, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, and uh, you know, uh, I've I, I caught a little slack from people who who enjoy the movie. I don't mean to, you know, I don't mean to poo poo them, but you know, well, but you I know, think if I knew, I'd be talking about them almost thirty years later. I probably would have uh, worked harder. <laughs> right. That's funny. But look, there's some, some broken hearted people who are like, "This is DB." He's a big fan of the Police Academy series. So you saying that right now is <laughs> it's like hurting crushing his, his heart right now? <laughs> Go ahead, dude. It, I am I'm a little bit sad on the inside. But also, I, I heard that um, when they were talking about rebooting the franchise, but then Hightower and Tackleberry passed away. So does that mean that it's not going to happen whatsoever, or is it still kind of... It's going to be a lot of CGI. <laughs> it's gonna, Damn. It's gonna be. Bobcat is off the hook. Yeah, breaking everybody's heart. I, yeah, no, uh, yeah, that was the thing that was that was that was you know weird. You know, I, I I can understand people having a fondness for a lot of the characters, but some of these people aren't with us. So so um, I'm I am I, I think it's appropriate that they reboot it. You know, plus we're all you know I'm 52 mm -hmm. and I'm one of the younger cast. You know, the the police chases would be really slow. <laughs> yeah, people in Rascals, you know, chasing people on motorcycles. <laughs> Yo, hey, let me ask you: You directed Jimmy Kimmel Live? Yeah, I did that for three years. For three years, and then you skyrocketed while you under your direction. Well, I, it did. It, it the yeah, the ratings did go up, but I, I can't take credit for that. Jimmy's a really smart guy. Yeah, yeah. I directed it for three years, and I said, I got to get out of here. This guy's going nowhere. He's holding me back. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what happened? No, no. I I went up and I and I made a, a small movie called Sleeping Dogs Lie, and it got into Sundance, yeah. and I just started get, making my own pictures so after that um that's why i left jimmy and i are still friends you know i i, I still yeah i I'll, I'll be on his show soon and stuff yeah. okay yeah he's doing well now do you do you do a lot of stand-up too right or do you yeah yeah i do, do i do stand-up and i direct it uh, right now i'm in uh, new york city directing a new show called friends of the people and um and and uh, and then I make my small independent movies you know i do about one every year every year and a half okay and uh, we I like to have stand-up comedians here, and I like, and I'm fascinated by the world of comedy. You know, I'm not a comic at all. I'm not funny the least bit, um, <laughs> but I made you laugh, yeah, right? So <laughs> yeah, you just this so, proved so, your own theory. I know, right? So, so uh, Sandra Bernhard come on, came on the other day. And we were talking about the Richard Pryor show, the original mm -hmm. Richard Pryor show, and all the great guests that uh, uh, cast members he had. And Robin Williams uh, was one of the people on the show friend of yours yeah robin and i uh, are really good friends i, I actually was his, his best man uh recently oh, and um oh, wow. yeah oh, so so uh we're really good friends it's funny he started a movie i did called world's greatest dad and mm -hmm. and then uh, i did <laughs> i just did a bigfoot movie so clearly i a like to bigfoot movie. i like to work with mysterious hairy <laughs> beings <laughs> 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 a bigfoot movie sandra said this because i'll ask her because in rapping we got this thing called biting where someone takes your style Mm. And I was asking, what is it in comedy, and who's probably one of the people who did it the most? Well, Robin was always a pain in the ass. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What did she I say? Mean, I'm he sorry. Was, you know, when Robin Williams walked into oh, the club, into the comedy store, everybody like stopped talking because they knew he'd be stealing their material. That yeah. was, I mean, Damn. you know, Robin was no, oh, he was known for that. Yeah, and he ripped people off all the time. He was a crazy pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> 
Would you agree? I, I'm no, but I was trying to think what bit of hers he could have ripped off. That oh, would, no, no, no. I mean, I'm just wondering what it would have been, you know. Um, but you know, uh, you know, Robin. Uh, uh, you know, the, I think I think Robin has this uh, reputation for it because he uh, uh, had 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 done some people's materials, and 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 what happened is he actually did the right thing. Uh, he owned it and actually gave people money. And it's the guys that steal and and don't do the right mm. thing and don't leave a paper trail, you know. Yeah. If they, the deniers, the people that go, oh no, I'm 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 completely original. I create in a vacuum. It's like really because that sounds a lot like something I said in the toilet last <laughs> night. <laughs> uh, so so I think that's why. But um, you know, for, uh, we've been really close for years, and and I've never had him nick any of my material. So uh, you know, so I don't know what that says, but maybe maybe, maybe my maybe stuff. Maybe don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? He don't like it. Yeah, maybe he's like, I'm not. I'm not about to. I'm not about to go. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how that would go. Wow, that's an excerpt from Willow Creek. Now, this is a movie that was actually put out independently last year, correct? Well, it it, it was playing the festivals last, uh, year. last year. That's kind of when I finished it, and then um, it opens uh, today, actually, uh, in New York at the IFC Theater. And uh, you can get it on all VOD, you know, Amazon and iTunes tonight, today. And um, and then I go to other I go to other cities with the movie. I'm actually bringing it back to the Pacific Northwest wow. and, and playing it for the Bigfoot believers, you know. Nice. Like myself, man. Bobcat Goldthwait is with us right now. Um, I told you, man, I grew up in Northern California. We, you know, we believe, like, if you go up to Ukiah, yeah. you go to uh, uh, Oregon, yeah. you know, we kind of believe that that was a possibility. What, well, did you, what did y'all film? We I filmed it where the Patterson-Gimlin footage was shot uh, in 67, which is that footage of Bigfoot uh, walking away and going, huh? And, you know, turning <laughs> around. So, so uh, that's that's in the middle of the Trinity National Forest. It's a, a, a it's. It's seventeen mile dirt road. It takes two and a half hours to get to that spot. And yeah. when we were filming, we, you know, we saw mountain lions and we saw, you know, and it, it was it was scary. And I think it helped the actors, but it wasn't the, <laughs> it wasn't lost on me the idea uh, like it would have been uh, funny if I got mauled to death, you know, if it was like you know bobcat killed by bobcat yeah, question no, no, mark, no, you know. Right. So <laughs> and I was like, they're not gonna yeah. they're not gonna help me either, you know. Be like, yeah. ah! He's like, oh, he's always doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, that's funny. Hey, did you bump into any weed fields, like marijuana well, fields? Well, that's the thing mm. I found. You know, um, the the town is really small, Willow Creek, and Bigfoot is their main industry, uh, besides growing weed. Yeah. And and um, and the, the, there's a woman I interview, a real woman, and she's like, I don't believe in Bigfoot, and she runs the visitor center. And to me, it was like her saying, and I hate pot. Too, you know, what I mean, it's <laughs> like, right. lady, this is your main industry what? here, but uh, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it is uh, a, a fascinating place. It's really cool, and that is a real element there. And and recently, cartels moved in, and it's not like you know, you you think of these like you know, stoner hippie types, but it's pretty hardcore up there now. Yeah, dangerous almost, right? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's a weird mixture of people. There's people. Um, <laughs> There's people looking for Bigfoot, and there's people with guns. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, a dichotomy, right? Uh, Tracy G asked a really interesting question. Yeah, we were talking about Mike Epps and Kevin Hart, because maybe like a month ago, they were both on social media getting back and forth with each other. It looked like it started from Mike Epps, like it was stemming from some sort of jealousy of Kevin Hart's success. So I wanted to know how you felt about that as a comedian, and then also if you ever experienced um, a fellow comedian who just couldn't take the sight of your light. Sure. Yeah. I, you know, um, I mean, this is a long time ago, but uh, Sam Kinison would uh, and I would always be having a beef, but it was a little bit more one sided because I didn't see the similarities in us, you know, but 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 I've noticed that whenever there is a beef, it's not it's not two people that are completely different. It's two people that people confuse or, you know what I mean? Like, you know, is that the, which, which long haired fat white guy are you? Uh, uh, So, um, so there was definitely uh, not a lot of love between he and I, but, but I understand the, the fascination with it. You know, we, that's, that's, you know, look that we love fighting, you know, I mean, we'd like to pretend we don't, but, but a bar has never cleared out because someone said, 
two guys are getting along in the parking lot. Let's go watch. Yeah. You know, so so I understand it. But um, that's the cool thing about uh, where I'm at now. You know, I, I try to uh, when I do stand up, I try to keep all my st- stories super autobiographical because mm-hmm. then someone can't say, hey, that's like a bit I have. You mm-hmm, know, it's mm-hmm. like you can't go. Really? That happened? Like. Uh, one of my favorite stories to tell right now is my daughter's a costume designer in Los Angeles and she works on commercials and movies and she was working on this thing with Russell Brand and I get the text from her she goes dad there's an emergency I I I I have diarrhea and I couldn't make it to the bathroom I'm supposed to go to so I went into uh, Russell Brand's uh, dressing room and I'm using his toilet right now and he just came back in and he doesn't know I'm in his bathroom <laughs> she goes what do, what do I what do I do and I go well when you're finished, make him feel awkward. Just open the door and go, hi, Russell Brand. I'm sorry. Uh, I had to change my tampon. Shark week. And um, oh. she texts back. She goes, Dad, you're the greatest. I love you. Now, she thought I was trying to help her out of an awkward situation, but really I was like, what could I have her say so Russell Brand won't try to fuck her? Oh. <laughs> That's hilarious and smart. So, so, so those are the kind of stories I enjoy telling on stage now because th- there's no other comic who's going to say, hey, wait a second. My daughter had diarrhea in Russell Brand's trailer too. You know, so, yes. mm-hmm. so. that's definitely an original right there. Bobcat Goldthwait is ruling with us, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna take one call. 888-742-3345. Hey, we got Tommy on the line from LA. What up, Tommy? Is it Tony? Hey, Tony. Hey, what up, Tony? Yeah, Tony. Hey, hey, so hey, hey uh, Heather B. What's Hi. going on, y'all? All right. Hey, uh, I remember growing up uh, watching this cat Bobcat as a kid. And uh, one of my favorite movies that he was in was uh, Shakes the Clown. Oh, thanks, man. I don't know if a lot of people had knew about that. Um, well, my movies but, my movies make hundreds of dollars, so I, I don't yeah. know if people... Yeah, Bob, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it, But, you know, it still got me late, though, because I remember a lot of times chicks in... Because um, I grew up in Chicago, and uh, a bunch of chicks that would be at the film schools would, you know, think they saw everything and was all avant-garde with comedy and, sh- and shit. But um, just showing them Shakes the Clown, they'd be like, oh, i never seen such a thing. Um, so, so have you ever seen the end of it? Um, yeah. I'm just By trying myself. to see how successful it was at getting <laughs> you laid. It was, it was pretty successful. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but, but, um, but being, uh, going like on 30 years when you did that movie or, or 25 years, when you had to, um, when you had to defend that movie on national TV, yeah. um, did you really think when you were making that 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 was going to happen? No, but I was really happy that clowns protested the movie. I remember uh, I I showed up to do the Today Show at 7 a.m. and I'm half awake, and they go, uh, uh, <laughs> they didn't tell me this, but I'm walking down the hallway. They go, uh, a clown's going to debate you on the program. And I go, yeah, I know. I've seen your show. And they, oh, sure. <laughs> and they go, they go, no, a real clown. I'm like, oh, my apologies to Katie. So, oh. so this dude in a clown suit at 7 a.m. wouldn't talk to me, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm Bobcat. What's your name? And he's nothing. And and I go, uh, what's your? He goes, I'm Bamboozle. He finally says, call me Bamboozle. I go, no, what's your real name? And uh, he goes, look, I'm in my clown attire. Call me by my clown name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, bamboozle. I'm in my sarcastic dildo attire right now. I need to be called by my dildotic name, Shitstain Ass Whippy. And um, so we, I didn't say that, but I was like, okay. So we get on the air, and then the clown is now like being all friendly. He's like, clowns do a lot of good for a lot of good causes, and Bobcat's film portrays them in a negative light. Like that, you know? <laughs> and I go, nobody thinks you're funny. The only reason you perform in hospitals, because that's one place a kid can't get up and run away from you. Ooh. You and said uh, on a show, on a live old- yeah, yeah, live. Katie Kirk says it was her worst interview ever. <laughs> <laughs> also, because now, now I've got an irate clown, and Katie Kirk had never seen my stand up, and back then I was doing the full on characters, so she didn't know what was going on. So I thought it was funny. She, <laughs> in, in, in an interview, she said that I was her worst interview, and my dad didn't have my back. He's like, What did you do to Katie Kirk? <laughs> yeah, wow. That's funny. That's a big accomplishment, man. Yeah. yeah. At least you'll you always be on her radar. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I have like these different things where, like, I, I'm her worst interview. And then um, when I set the Tonight Show on fire, you know, uh, when Leno, back when, when people, you know, were into Leno, <laughs> I set his show on fire. And then I got arrested. I'm one of, I think I might be the only talk show guest that got arrested 
outside. I mean, like Springer, they I'm sure people got arrested, but yeah. But uh, <laughs> I set the tonight show on fire, and then I, ha- I had to go to court. You had to go to court over there. <laughs> yeah, I got I got fined four thousand dollars, and I was on probation for four years. <laughs> For setting the Tonight Show on fire, it was a little fire. I mean, it still was dangerous, but you know. But when I did it, um, you know, so so they made me do public service announcements that were like, "Hi, I'm Bobcat Goldthwait. I can switch back and forth, but if you're seriously injured in a fire, <laughs> and so and so, the fire marshal didn't like my performance, and I had to refilm it. And I love the fact that the Burbank fire marshal even wants to direct. He's like, "I I didn't buy it, Bobcat. You know, you 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 really phoned it in." But uh, you know, I was like, "What was the p?" I say he's gonna be, you know, you know. Hi, I'm Bobcat. If you're ever on a talk show, don't set it on fire. Back to you, McGruff. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your old friend Kelsey Grammer with some safe driving tips. No wow. sure. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Yo, D- DB, I know this is your hero. How you enjoying it? Pretty much, yes. I, uh, I'm i loving every minute of it. It's great. <laughs> All right. Uh, you you good? All right, cool. Bobcat, man, thank you for coming by, man. Oh, thank you. What- Thanks for having me on. You're, you're listening to Sway in the morning on Shea 45.